time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Robert. What's shaking today, Dad? How you doing? Never call you Robert. I know <laughs> Robert, I did that. I like that. You know, it's uh, yeah. what happened to King. He used to call me King Prince. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Things are good. How are you doing, son? Can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, glad to be alive and well here on this uh, glorious February weekend, and I'm hanging with you in Florida. So it doesn't happen that often that I get down to uh, enjoy the life of Bob. But uh, I like to take it full advantage when I'm here. Well, it's going to be a great week, and uh, hopefully we got a great show. Let's let's see what we got today. Yeah, well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about financial regrets. Making bad decisions when it comes to your financial plan can leave you with a lot of financial regret. Bob and I are going to discuss some of the bigger mistakes you need to avoid. We're going to talk about low-hanging fruit. We're going to talk about a few small tweaks that have applied to your portfolio can have a big positive impact on your retirement, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. In our spotlight segment, we have our financial advisor on the show this morning, Emily DeValent, where we're actually going to review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's get right to it, Bob. You know, I thought what might be helpful for our listeners this morning is we discuss some of the regrets we've seen people experience over some of the bad financial decisions they've made so we can learn from those mistakes. And one that we've seen a lot is retiring just way too early. Now, Ryan, that's, uh, the problem is not just retiring too early. It's really the decision you make on when you should retire because there's only two certainties in life. What do they happen to be? Death and taxes, Ben Franklin. My favorite ben Franklin, yep. Two certainties. And so in financial planning, what you're dealing with is all the uncertainties. And the uncertainty is when are you going to leave this planet, right? If you're 65 years old and you're a male, what do you think you live to today, right? I'm going to say 79. 84. And oh, if wow. you're a woman and your 65th birthday's passed, how long do you think you live till? I'm going to say 89. Well, 87. So you have, you're close on both. But uh, what happens is that this is just the latest numbers from Social Security. So I think what you have to do is plan on living even longer than that, you know, if you're planning for your retirement. So retiring too early can be a huge mistake. And what, what do you think or what are some of the biggest pitfalls of throwing it in early? Right? First of all, right, why would you want to leave early? Well, you might just not like your job. Let's be honest. <laughs> you might go. be counting That's the seconds reason, to get right? out. Yeah, <laughs> they're driving it. They're driving you out the door. But you know, so if you just stay a couple more years, what are some of the benefits? Well, a couple things. I mean, to your point, I think first off, we have to remember now, right? It's not your parents' retirement. You know, you're realistically, even if you retire at a normal retirement age, like sixty-five. Like to your point, Bob, I mean, you could be retired for another like 25, 30 years. That's a long, mm-hmm. long time. So longevity is the big thing. And I had this experience recently. I had a couple that I met with this past week. A woman said, I've been working since I was eight years old. She's wow. uh, just about to turn 70 now. She's like, she's I am still so- working? She's still working, still working oh, down man. the home, st- home stretch. But literally, if she waits, she wants, she's like, she said, I want to retire in May. But she gets a bump up in her pension benefit if she goes all the way to the end of the summer. And I can tell like she doesn't even want to do it, but she's like, I just know to get that eight percent on my pension every year is a huge difference. You know, she's gonna basically go a little bit longer. But it, I mean, it could be the the difference in inches here, Bob, is I guess my point. You know, maybe it's a year difference can have a huge impact on when you should retire. So let me get this right, right? So she, she just hangs out for a couple more months, she's gonna get an eight percent bump in her retirement benefit. So what'd you tell her to do? Just like hang out and and not show up? What are they going to do? Are they going to fire her? They can't fire her, right? She can sue them for <laughs> age discrimination. I didn't give her advice on her work ethic for her last couple months of work, but I, uh, I did recommend <laughs> and she agreed that, you know, let's go a little bit longer. And I think that's the value of doing the actual financial plan. 
because you mm-hmm. can see the difference of, okay, hey, what if I just worked another year longer or two years longer versus right. retiring you know, maybe this year? I mean, a lot of times that can be the difference between you being able to live on your money to age 90 and not being able to do it. And that's why it's so, so critical, Bob, to run those projections and make a really good decision about the right time to retire. You know, the other side of that, Rye, is there's so many people who tell us that, uh, well, you know, I really don't need to do projections because I'll just keep working, you know, as long as I want. Well, what are some of the reasons why they don't allow you to continue working, you know, past retirement age? Uh, Well, sometimes they just, you know, they can't afford to pay you anymore. So they're going to phase you out when you get to a certain age. Yeah, sometimes you get downsized. and Sometimes your health doesn't cooperate. I mean, I, you know, I've lost a lot of good friends in the last couple of years in their mid 60s, you know, who were who never got a chance to retire. So you, you don't know what your health is going to be. So, you know, what's the answer, right? If you don't know how long you're going to live, how do you know when to retire? What what should you be doing in your planning? Well, I mean, that's another good point to going to the extreme there, Bob. What you need to be doing is you need to look at what we call what's that day that you hit financial independence? Because we get a lot of people to say the same thing. You may think to yourself, well, I'm just going to work forever. So what do I care about retirement? But to your point, you don't have all the control over that. Who knows what your health's going to be? So what I like to say is, what's that date when you can be dependent on your portfolio and you work because you want to work, not because you have to work? Or on the flip side of the coin, right? Or how much further do you have to go before you know you can safely start to draw from your portfolio. So I mean, that magical year, we'll call it, is really the year of financial independence. And it's going to be different for everybody. And that's why you have to have some sort of financial projections run. Well, that's what your grandfather used to say, you know, when you have a big pile of tell people where to go money. So if you come <laughs> into work and you know, like your boss, you can tell them where to go. You can tell them what to do with that job. So it, it really is. That's uh, you know, why should anybody want to retire if they love their job? If they're if they're not working, if it's their hobby, they really love it. But I think having a goal of financial independence, having that big pile of telling people where to go money makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, exactly. Just have to plan for it. And if you're thinking to yourself mm-hmm. right now, I want to be financially independent, not just retire, but know the right date that I can walk away and I'm not going to run out of money. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic retirement review where we look at the whole financial picture. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer, bring all those financial statements into the office. What we'll do is we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial situation. And then we can start looking at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden cost in investment portfolios. I know it's shocking, but Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are on those annuities, insurance products, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. How are you going to replace the income once you stop working? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio protected? Did your portfolio get hit really hard back in December when the market collapsed? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio in retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we are the pains of no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Global stock prices edged higher once again this week on the news that the Federal Reserve put itself on hold. 
and indicated clearly that it will not only stop raising interest rates, but will stop shrinking its balance sheet in the second half of the year. The market loves the new quote unquote patient approach to interest rate hikes, and especially since further rate hikes will be tied to inflation, which has continued to be very well contained in what is now the second largest economic expansion in U.S. history. A big beneficiary of this week's Fed comments is the U.S. consumer, as mortgage rates fell to their lowest average in more than a year, providing home buyers a boost in affordability. Another big market edging higher on the week was crude oil, maintaining more than three-month highs held by a slightly weaker U.S. dollar. So both global stocks and oil closed out the week higher on the back of investor optimism that the U.S. and China could soon reach a trade deal. A resolution between the world's two largest economies will not only be positive for stocks, but will have a big impact on global oil demand. See, this matters because the U.S. is now the largest producer and almost the largest exporter of crude oil on the planet. U.S. oil production has risen by 100,000 barrels a day last week to a record 12 million barrels a day. This makes the U.S. the only country to ever reach this milestone. This means oil is completely tied to the health of our economy and will start to marry our stock market to the price of crude. As our oil industry and oil companies become larger and larger, oil company earnings will become a bigger part of S&P total earnings. And as we all know, earnings, that's profits, are the mother's milk of stock prices. So crude oil and the stock market will start to run hand in hand. And I predict soon the new adage on Wall Street will become, as goes the stock market, so goes oil. Now, if they're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio appropriate to my risk tolerance? Do I have a portfolio built to achieve my family's goals and dreams and with my values? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Simply give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. Bob and I, we're simple men, so of course, we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we try to give you very common sense, practical advice you can use with your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just so you're up to speed with the new tax reform, and you can simply download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B U L L I S H, to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. Highlights from the new tax law. You can download it for free. Just get up to speed with the new tax reform for your taxes this year. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. So, Bob, when securing your retirement every week, we speak a lot about the importance of putting together a comprehensive financial plan for yourself, which you know, to some extent can feel very, very overwhelming. But the good news is, you know, with just a few adjustments to your portfolio can have a huge impact. And I thought, you know, today we could talk about just addressing some of these small tweaks that you can make that could potentially get you on that path to what we call financial freedom. You know, I think a big one is we're probably all sitting with way too much cash right now, earning nothing. Well, according to my client, Rye, that's not the problem. Okay. He called me up yesterday and he said, Bob, you know what we need? We need to get Trump out of the White House and get Jimmy Carter back in. (laughs) Why Jimmy Carter? He said, that man knew how to run a recession. He said, I was getting 20% in my money market fund when he was president. We need to bring him back. Well, the problem is, wasn't inflation like 25%? Yeah, that's what he didn't understand. He said, you know, the problem with cash is cash is always going to yield less than inflation. So no matter what the return is, whether it's 20% or a whopping 2% like you get right now, you're still losing money to inflation because investing is all about overcoming inflation. But right, Right. why do people love cash so much? What's the big attraction of cash? I mean, obviously cash doesn't fluctuate. So you don't have to worry about every day logging into your accounts or getting your statements every month. You don't have to worry about what price is your portfolio going to be at when your money's just sitting in cash, safely, snugly put away? Yeah, see, that's a problem. You know, in the last couple of years, we've had low interest rates. Over the last 10 years, we've had low interest rates. And the biggest casualty of the financial crisis have been, you know, our clients, parents, and grandparents, you know, who typically invested their money in short term certificates of deposit or in short term depository notes, and they made no money. All they had to do 
was invest in a portfolio that uh, with maturities of four or five years, right? I mean, who doesn't invest their money for longer than five years when you talk about retirement planning? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we always forget, we talk about this in the first segment is retirement could last a very long time. You know, it's like if you're retired now, you might be retired for another 15, 20, sometimes 30 years. So you're right, Bob, I mean, your time horizon, you, you need to have money that's essentially set up you know, for all different stages of your retirement. So some of your money has to be a little bit longer term, some has to be shorter term. But I think the big problem is when we talk about cash is, and I hear this all the time right now, like, man, money market funds are paying so much right now. I can get two and a half, <laughs> actually I saw 2.3% the other day. But if you Ooh. do the math on that, we always forget we pay taxes on that 2.3%. So now you're below, you know, maybe you're getting one and a half I don't know, 1.6% on your money. And we know inflation was over 2% last year. So cost of living went up more than what you returned on your money after you paid taxes on it. And that's a really bad deal long-term because that means incrementally, it's like death by a thousand cuts. Your money is slowly eroding in purchasing power, which is like the worst thing you can have happen to you as a retiree. So right, we all realize that you need to pay your bills with cash. But what yes. I hear you saying is, Cash is trash. It's cash flow that's king. And you need Ooh. to invest your money to get cash flow. That was really well said, Bob. But no, that's it, right? And that's that's the key to investing. And we talk about this on the show all the time, too. It's just like you hear all these shows, the financial propaganda out there about when to get in and out of the market. But what no one really talks about is in the most important part of investing and why you want to have a portfolio is the income that it generates. Because no matter if the market's up or down in any given year, if you have a portfolio that's built for retirement, it just doesn't matter if it's reeling off income that you can live off of. And even better, Bob, in a lot of cases, it's income that it, that grows over time. What's better than having a growing cash flow investment? Nothing greater than that, right? So what do you do when you have a portfolio where you're paying an asset manager a fee, but they don't do anything? <laughs> that's called like every portfolio out there, <laughs> right? So well, yeah, just, the, it just yeah. goes along with my old favorite sci-fi movie, right? The one that <laughs> it's called the the day the Earth stood still. You know, the day you moved your yeah. money over to a, a money a wire house to invest your money. Yeah, like I mean, what are the chances right now? You have money at a firm right now. It's been sitting there for at least ten years. You never hear from the representative ever. And you would be shocked to find out if you were to actually look at the investments you own, you're paying lots of fees every year. And that kind of that's a bad deal to me, Bob. If I'm paying all these fees on these investments I own and my representative's not even calling me, like that's bad service. You know, right, they call it financial services industry, but what we have experienced is there's an enormous lack of service. I mean, what should you do with an advisor who never calls you, who never keeps you up to date, or never makes any changes in your portfolio? Well, I think the first thing you want to do, and this is part of our process, is you just want to get statements for all those assets out there because you probably have accounts in a lot of different places. What we'll do is put them together on a spreadsheet, go through and look at the fees you're paying on all those accounts, and then you can start saying, okay, I've got all these different accounts. I'm paying all these fees. Is this advisor calling me? Am I getting any service? And if it's a no and you are paying a lot of fees, time to consolidate that account, right? That's just such a great way to get the process started because you know why pay for something you're not getting? And in the financial services industry, unfortunately, a lot of times that's exactly how it works. You're paying a lot of fees well, on know, investments and no one's servicing you. you know, the other problem I see, Ryan, is when you worked with a lot of different companies and, and you've moved around and you have 401k accounts that are sitting there, a lot of times they're sitting in cash. A lot of times they're sitting in investment that's not performing or not performing as well as much as the risk you're taking. So what do you do with those old 401ks? Exactly. Consolidate, right? I mean, this is the low-hanging mm -hmm. fruit right here. Just get them all, put them in one individual retirement account or IRA for you. And to your point, Bob, you know, if you put all these accounts together, a lot of times you can get a better discount on your money. Because the way the financial services industry works is when you consolidate money together, it's typically a sliding scale, meaning the fees come down. Whereas if you have small accounts at all these different locations, you're getting treated on those individual accounts at a much higher fee than you could have if you put it all together. I mean, it's the power of consolidation. Yeah, you know, right. You're really get, I'm getting discouraged. I mean, you have when you have an <laughs> okay. advisor who's underperforming and not calling you, they don't tell you that. You had 401ks, the company you used to work for it doesn't call you up and tell you what your options are. Hey, at least the insurance company will call you up and tell you that you have a policy that's not performing. We should replace it. How about oh, that? No, but, yeah, that never happens, right? You oh, probably you goodness. may have some of these whole life policies out there. Haven't heard from that sales rep since you bought the policy back in the eighties. And you have all this cash value on the policy. Now you're getting close to retirement. You have a death benefit. What do you do? 
right? So you, you got to review all these things. And this is, in my mind, Bob, that low-hanging fruit, just to get a tally up and an analysis of what you own, then you can start making some good decisions. You know, it sounds like to me, Rye, is that uh, you need to take care of your money because nobody's going to care about your money like you do. And if you're thinking right now, I need someone to take a look at my low-hanging fruit and see if I'm doing all the things necessary to achieve my goals, to achieve my dreams, and to do it with the least amount of risk and the lowest cost. Well, all you have to do is be one of the next 10 callers and have saved at least 200000 for retirement. Here's your opportunity. It's a full, holistic review. We look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. All we need you to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a shopping bag, put them in a folder. You don't have to open up the envelopes. Pick up the phone, call or text us, set up an appointment. We're going to sit down with you and review everything you have and build your own 360 financial portal, which will allow you to review your portfolio in real time. It'll allow you to get financially organized. Why wouldn't you want to do that? You know, it's your complete financial life in real time at your convenience whenever you feel like looking at it. On top of that, we're going to take your portfolio and we're going to break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, especially in these volatile times. You want to be certain that you're diversified. You don't want to be overcharged by your own portfolio. I don't know about you, but I dislike being overcharged by anyone. And lastly, you need that income. You know, once we retire, we're going to have that income gap that has to be filled. When we're in retirement, we need that income to stay retired. Number one goal of all retirees, stay retired and live comfortably. We're going to do all that for you. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, which will answer the age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track. Just get started with the financial planning process. Give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone. Gird your loins. Let's find out. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the disturbing world of financial propaganda? Hey, Ryan, there's a great article written by Howard Marks, who's been a... Um, long-term money manager for a company called Oak Tree Capital. Now, the guy's kind of eccentric, but he's been very successful, and he's a value manager, which means he likes to buy things that are out of favor. He was quoted in an article called The Paradox of Prediction. Okay. What does that mean? And what that means is that uh, even if you're able to predict correctly what's going to happen if you are in line with the consensus forecast, rarely is that the one that makes you big money. Turns out to make big money, you got to look for something that's like a black swan event, you know, something like a collapse of the financial markets or something that people don't consider. Because as it turns out, we're all average, normal human beings. And you know what all average, normal human beings do, Ry? Tell me, Bob. We predict the future based on our most recent experience. So, for example, if you had a down month in your portfolio, what do you think you expect to happen the next month? I mean, if you have a down month, the next month you expect to go down as well. Yeah. So this is what happens, right? And, and you have all these people out there saying, read so-and-so because they predicted the crash in 08 or they predicted <laughs> the 1929 collapse. None of these people are real. Basically, what they are are either consistently permit bulls or over-optimistic or they're consistently doomsdayers, which we call perma bears. And basically what the article said is if you make one 
proper call. If you're correct one time out of 647 attempts, that's not called forecasting. That's not <laughs> called skill. That's pure dumb luck. And so the <laughs> gist of the article is don't listen or don't read financial propaganda. Stay skeptical. Be an investor and invest in what's valuable not what other people's opinions are, because the consensus is typically wrong. Yeah, and I think December is a great example of that. I heard a lot of people bragging that they got out of the market right before December, but <laughs> now we're at the same levels we were before December happened. So it's like, what do you do? You know, what was the point of getting out? Because now the market's already at the same level, and some markets are actually even already higher. So you know, it's just. You know, you sound so smart when you, you talk about all these abilities to, to get in and out of the market. But you know, the problem is we talk about this a lot, Bob. Is you don't have to be right once; you have to be right twice. You know, it's like you get out of the market, okay. Now the market cracks or goes down. When do you get back in? And I have yet to find someone who's so good that then they time the other part of that trade perfectly. It's just like it doesn't happen in reality. No, it's definitely a uh, false profit. Yeah, false profit. And false profits are, are not good to follow when you're trying to invest your money for retirement. So make a note of that. Another article I found this week was entitled, A 5 to 10% Correction is Vital for the Stock Market Warns a Strategist. And I love well, this. Well, you know, that's, that's financial propaganda that's best, right? Keeping you uninvested. Yes, exactly. And it goes on to say in the article, a consolidation where a pullback is absolutely necessary. I mean, nothing's necessary mm. when it comes to the market. <laughs> the markets aren't that rational. Well, let's take 2017. Market went up every single month. You didn't have a 5 or 10% correction. So based on this person, they're telling you, sit in cash until you get a 5 to 10% correction. Well, you sit in cash for a whole year, you don't make any return. Well, that's part of the problem. And I think the other part of psychological too, Bob, and I talked about this last week, and we're seeing this a lot with our own clients, is like the markets have recovered almost everything we lost back in December. And mm -hmm. now the question becomes, well, my portfolio is back to where it was. Is it time to take some money out of the market and go to cash? Which is ludicrous, right? <laughs> From our standpoint. Well, well not, not for financial propagandists, right? That's how they make their living, telling people to do the wrong thing. Remember, investing is about investing in a goal. And here's something most of you don't really understand. Making money is not a goal, right, Ry? I mean, when you invest, you have to have a goal. What are some of the great goals of life? The biggest one, obviously, is you don't want to run out of money in retirement. You want to have enough income coming in so you can do all the things that you want to do, what we call financial independence. You know, Maybe you want to help educate your kids, your grandkids. They're two of the bigger ones. Yeah. So if you say focused on your goals, then you're always going to be an investor. If you're just trying to make money, you're always going to be a loser. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's no game plan. And I think that's what's happening right now is if you're not on track for your goals for retirement, then you, you might be asking questions like this. Oh, maybe I should take some money out of the market. Well, you know, if that's what you're thinking, you probably don't have the right strategy because the reality of it is you should have money in bonds and other places for protection always in case there's a market pullback. But the money you have in the market, that's for the long term. It's not saying, hey, when I get to a certain point, I'm going to draw some money out of the market, put it in cash. I'll wait for a pullback or the market to go down, then I'll put money back in. It doesn't really work that way. Even though it sounds like it should work that way, in reality, it doesn't. Because I'll give you another example, Bob. From here, the market could go a lot higher. And if it does, hmm. and you're sitting in cash, and you miss that move, you never get that move back again. And that's more detrimental to your retirement than maybe having another pullback or correction in the market per se. Well, it's always the problem of stepping out of a market, ride. Right? It's like riding the elevator in your building, in your office building or in your apartment building. If you get off on the third floor and the elevator never comes back down to the third floor to pick you up, it goes up to the penthouse, you miss the whole move. You never can recoup that. It's just too much pressure to time the market. Nobody does it well. And the question I think you should ask anytime you see a financial propaganda article or you see these people on television acting like they know, in the back of your mind, say, if they're that smart, do they have more money than Warren Buffett? And I'll tell you what, Rye, the answer is usually no. It's always no, unless you're Bill Gates so, <laughs> or Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I don't know. After the divorce, maybe not. I'm not sure. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, 
I need a plan. I'm thinking about getting out of the market right now because it's recovered. I know that's not a strategy, so I need a real strategy. Here's a shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is print off those statements off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, I know it's shocking. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on those high cost mutual funds, on those high cost mutual funds on those insurance products, annuities, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to make your portfolio more tax efficient. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. How are you going to replace your income when you finally stop working? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio and do it in the most tax efficient manner. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market went down? Are you protected moving forward? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio, protect it for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question for you. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Don't miss out. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. And we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. It's no pain, no gain financial radio, and Bob and I want to make sure that you're up to speed with the most common sense, up-to-date advice, and that's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, It just gives you all the new highlights from the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law just to get you up to speed with new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at BeBullish.com. That's questions at BeBullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with our questions today, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. Mark, what's shaking this morning? Always good to be with you guys. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for February to be done. I'm done with the cold. I'm ready for it to heat up. And I'm ready for sports to heat up. I mean, March Madness right around the corner. You got the Masters right around the corner. It's going to be a good uh, couple of months ahead of us, but I'm ready to get there. I'm tired of the snow. (laughs) I'm with you there, man. I'm with you there. No more bad weather. No No more more bad weather. No more bad weather. No more flu season. Be done with it. I'm ready to get outdoors. So bring it on. Bring it on. Well, we got a couple of good questions this week. This one comes to us from Johnny in Chatham, New Jersey. He says, Bob, I have a weird situation. I've been very aggressive about funding my IRAs and 401ks over the years. So I have close to $2 million in those accounts. But I'm only 54 and 
suddenly find myself needing cash for a major home repair that I didn't expect. I feel poor because I have less than $5,000 in the bank because all of my money is tied up in retirement accounts. Should I just take the money out of the IRA and eat the penalty that I'd have to pay it for taking it out so early? Johnny, that's a great question and congratulations on accumulating such a great amount of money in your retirement accounts. But the one thing you never want to do they withdraw money before you're 59 and a half because there's a 10% penalty. Now, I know you wouldn't want to take it all out, but Rye, if he takes out $2 million, that's a $200,000 penalty. Plus, he has to pay income tax on that income as ordinary income. So that's a huge, huge hit if you took money out of retirement plans. Johnny, I think he did a great job of saving for retirement, but where's his emergency fund? I mean, it's a big glaring hole in his planning. Well, he doesn't have it now, so it's kind of like we can't cry over spilt milk, but there are a lot of creative options you can use here, Bob. I mean, everything from maybe a home equity loan, depending on where the interest rate is. If you have money in a 401k, you can actually take a loan against your 401k as opposed to taking the money out for tax penalties, and you pay the loan back to yourself with interest to yourself. So, Johnny, there are a couple different things you can do. And the thing is, Bob, when you have a lot of different things you can do, you really need to make that decision in context with the rest of your financial plan, right? Yeah, you're right, Rob. I mean, you could take a loan against your home because that interest that you borrow is tax deductible, right? As opposed to you know borrowing against your credit card or borrowing against the line of credit. So a lot of times you can get very creative in generating this short-term need to repair your home or whenever any other unexpected costs come up. What type of planning do you think Johnny should be doing going forward? I mean, look, it's it's all in context of a full holistic financial plan. So the first thing you want to do is run those retirement projections and see how taking that loan out fits into the whole plan. And then you can figure out where do you fund it from? How do you pay that loan back? How does it affect what you're going to need in retirement? So you know, bottom line is every decision you make can't be made in a vacuum. It's got to be made with a holistic plan. All right. Well, thanks for writing in, Johnny. This next question comes to us from Jocelyn in Huntington, Long Island. She says, Ryan, I have a lot of blue chip stocks that I've had for years like Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, and GE, things like that. I've been told that I should find different investments as I get closer to retirement, but I really like these stocks because I've had them for so long. Do I really need to make a change? Well, Jocelyn, unless you've been living under a rock, General Electric has not done very well the last couple of years. And I think that's the problem. And you perfect point here, Bob. Coca-Cola's done great. Procter & Gamble's done great. But General Electric has not done great. And that's the risk you have with individual stocks. You, know, you can be doing so well for so long, and then bam, one of those companies takes a turn for the worse, and all of a sudden, your retirement plan could be in jeopardy. Yeah, so much so, Ry. Even There's no way to predict what companies are going to succeed and what companies are going to fail when you're in a capitalist society. But if you know you have a company that's a 30-year portfolio or 10% of your portfolio and it goes down like GE did and cuts its dividend, well, you might as well have sat in cash and not even taken the risk of investing. So this is a classic case of not being diversified. And even though they're blue chip stocks, I would call this more speculation than I would investment. Yeah. And here's the danger of it, because a lot of times we do it for sentimental value. Maybe it's something that was passed on from your parents. You know, I always think, Bob, of Merrill Lynch stock. You and I both worked at Merrill Lynch. Hmm. Company was around for over 90 years. Company did great for almost 90 years. And then within literally a year, the stock basically almost went to zero. And you know, one of the things I hear a lot of times is if you work for the company, is well, you know, hey, I know what's going on in the company. You know, I can tell things are going to start going badly. Well, I worked at Merrill Lynch, and no one told me that the stock was going to literally go to almost zero. And I was working at the company, so that doesn't necessarily ring true. Well, you know, Ra, I was very fortunate. Uh, I did have an advisor that told me that Merrill Lynch could go to zero, and that I should get the heck out. It had to be you. And uh, thank goodness you saved my bacon because. I had a lot of money in Mother Merrill someplace. I started there back in in the 70s. I was very loyal to the firm and I loved the company. But you know what? The stock doesn't love you back. I could have lost millions if it wasn't for you. So, you know, having a great advisor, happens to be my son, is something that I'll always cherish. Well, I always say, Bob, my inheritance should be a little bit higher than my brother and sister, given my great advice over the years. <laughs> well, you should tell your brother and sister they wouldn't have an inheritance had you not advised me to diversify my largest holding. And that's something you really got to be careful about. Don't have too much of a good thing because it could turn out to be a disaster. Yeah. And there's no forewarning, right? There's there's no gifted insight. You can't argue that just because the company's been around for 
almost 100 years. Uh, again, Merrill Lynch was around for almost 100 years, and there's a lot of other stocks we can say the same about. And secondly, just because you have privy information into the company, you know, you're not there in the management team. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Even people in the company don't. Don't delude yourself. Be smart, diversify in retirement. You know, Rod, those are all really good points. And, you know, I'm going to ask you a question. When it comes to being financially organized, where do you say Johnny and Jocelyn are on a scale of one to 10? Oh, man, it's not good, Bob. I'm going to say a one and a half today. I am not feeling benevolent. Yeah, they need a lot of work. And I'd like to ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you right now? If you'd like to be a 10, and I don't know why you wouldn't, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers, especially if you saved at least 200000 in retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. This is a full holistic review of everything you own, and not only in your portfolio, but your entire net worth. It'll display on a daily basis in real time where you stand in your financial organization. It'll look at your goals, not only display your goals, but show how well you're progressing towards those goals. You'll have your own financial planning scorecard, and it'll help you to achieve those goals with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as any professional can provide. On top of that, we're going to take all of your statements. I mean, stick them in a shopping bag, stick them in a folder, pick up the phone, give us a call or text us. We're going to take all that information and break it down to a simple spreadsheet, which will identify whether or not you have a portfolio with the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. We want to be certain that you are bulletproof against this volatility to have a diversified portfolio, which has a high probability of achieving your goals. We want to be certain there's no overlap, that you don't have too much of a good thing. You don't have too much of a GE before it cuts its dividend so that you can achieve those goals. We look at cost. You know, I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged and I don't want to be overcharged by my portfolio. There's tons of hidden costs in these mutual funds and these annuities in your portfolio. Let us help you to eliminate those costs and take that money out of your advisor's pocket and put it in the pocket it belongs, yours. And lastly, let's look at income. You know, cash flow is so critical. We all have that income gap when we retire, when that paycheck stops coming from our company. We want to be certain that we have a dependable, repeatable income stream, not only to get us in retirement, but more importantly, to keep us retired. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan that will answer the age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or are your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting for 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a professional fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left if you're one of the next few callers at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. Nine two. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on no pain, no gain. Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense, practical advice you can use for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, the highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed on the new tax reform, you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law. To get up to speed with the new tax reform with taxes around the corner, you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. And we now have a very, very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, our financial advisor here at Payne Capital Management, Emily DeValent. Emily, it's your second time on the show, and I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I'm very excited. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Bob. Morning, Emma. I hear you got a great case for us today. 
I do. Yeah, I'm very excited to share. <laughs> yes. This is our spotlight segment where every week we take a real retirement plan that we worked on and we just talk about some of the things, mistakes, couples, people have made with their investing and how we help them get on their path to financial freedom. And then you worked on a really good case uh, this past week with a couple. So why don't you give us the rundown and tell us how you helped this couple out? Perfect. Um, thanks, Ryan. Yeah. So I worked on a case this week with uh, actually a current set of clients who not only have accounts with us, but they do have accounts with an advisor that they had previously, and they're looking to you know, see if, if they need to make some changes in the other accounts as well. So every year we sit down and do a full annual review, give a full analysis, not only of the accounts that they have with us, but also the accounts that they have with their other advisor, because you know those accounts as well are gonna help shape the decisions that I make, that we make here, yes. um, to make sure that kind of all of the pieces are working together. No, that's one of the things that we make mandatory at Payne Capital Management is every 12 months, you get a whole financial review. And I love the fact that when you do that, you don't do it in a vacuum. You take into account everything the specific client owns so you can make the best decisions about the money that you're investing here, which is a beautiful thing. Well, it's a great lesson for everyone, right? So, uh, you know, Em, you should have every dollar managed in concert with every dollar you have. It doesn't matter what pocket it sits in, right? It's you know, every investment you have, you should consider how that works, you know, with the other investments, no matter whether you have it, one advisor, two advisors, your 401k, your IRA, or you have it in the bank. We're an insurance yeah. company for that matter. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Bob. And that's, you know, exactly why I wanted to sit down and just make sure that, you know, the things that were happening last year in these accounts are still happening this year. Because if there are any changes, you know, that might be something that may affect our, you know, accounts and what we're taking a look at here. So we took a look and we, I had them upload everything into eMoney was the first step. That way that I can get mm -hmm. you know, a real time version of exactly what that other advisor and what they're looking at is. And the first thing I noticed is that this is a couple who the husband is in his late 70s. The wife is a little bit younger, but she's still in her 60s. And they were definitely over allocated into equities. They're looking at about 70% in the equity market which for them, you know, with their spending and, and their accounts and everything else, I just think that that's a little bit too aggressive. So that was the first thing that we wanted to take a look at. And then well, I agree. Those, I think that's very yeah. aggressive. And I think that's the great advantage of the of the e-money portal, right? The mm -hmm. financial portal is when you look at an account in a vacuum, it may not look yes. that aggressive. But when Absolutely. you put it all together, you feel like, oh, my goodness, you're taking risks in the point where can you afford to lose 40 or 50 percent of your money not knowing what you're doing? And that's that's the problem when we work alone or, or, or we just try to manage investments in a vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Just out of curiosity, did they even know they were taking that much risk? They actually, they knew that they were taking a little bit more risk than probably the average couple in their situation, but definitely not this much risk. And then what they didn't know either was that the equities themselves were actually pretty much, which is something that we see, it's so common. They were really just categorized into large cap growth and large cap value. So even among mm. the, you know, riskier side of the portfolio, they weren't even spread out. So right. that was the, the biggest kind of takeaway from them uh, um, that they didn't know. Yeah. And I think, you know, mentioned about that overlap, right? That, mm -hmm. That's what we look at. So when you put everything together, a lot of times you'll find you may have lots of different accounts. You may have investments with different names, but they own the same thing. So you end up with, in this mm -hmm. case, a handful of lots of large cap US companies, which is great. But the problem is, it's like you live by the sword, you die by the sword mm -hmm. when you have all your money concentrated in one area. And that's what happened at the end of the year when December came and the market sold off. It was those big, large cap US companies mm -hmm. that got hit the hardest. And that's why it's really important to know where your risk is basically concentrated. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing that they had in there was that they actually didn't have any type of like outright bonds in these accounts. So everything was held in just really kind of expensive mutual funds and bond funds as well that were pretty much doing the same thing. So not only were they 30%... I my ears, Em. I hate I bond know, funds. I know. I <laughs> know. We hate bonds. I actually we did like say that to funds. them too. <laughs> I dislike them. I'm sorry. I dislike, dislike them strongly. Them. Yeah, I know. Especially this particular client. She does like buying when the market is low. And when I looked at the portfolio for her, I was like, you know, you actually don't really have much opportunity to to kind of rebalance when we get tips in the market like we did in December. She doesn't have anywhere to really take from there. The bond funds weren't, you know, anything special and that's really all they had in the accounts. You know, the thing that's crazy to me is first off, these mutual funds and some of these are paying like two and a half percent, which is a very high fee to pay internally in a fund. But also just looking at 
not only the fees that you can reduce on the portfolio and the income, that's like $22,000 a year mm-hmm. between lowering the fees, increasing the income. That's a crazy number. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they had these really expensive, you know, the mutual funds and the bond funds. And then aside from that, they were actually paying about 2% in an advisory fee every year. Whoa! So <laughs> not only did they have these fees that they didn't even really know about, these internal expenses, but on top of that, they were paying, you know, 2% for this guy to manage it. And one of the things that I did see with that as well is that they were definitely getting a lack of planning. They really hadn't sit down with him and done any type of planning in the past. You know, they kind of said the past maybe like two or three years. And so they're definitely they're paying a high fee and they weren't getting any service is how they felt. You know, that's the beauty of the spreadsheet. It tells you exactly what your costs are on an annual basis. Very rarely do we have anyone who comes into our door where they know what they're paying. And you ask mm-hmm. them, you know, what fee they charge? Even when they call their advisor, how much am I paying? They get some convoluted answer. Here you get yeah. a hard number. You see exactly what it is, and you see what the implications are going forward. So I think that's one of the just big attributes of this spreadsheet and worth just coming in to see you, Em, just to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more, Bob. <laughs> I like to I like to hang out with Emily DeValent and have her show me how to reduce costs and increase income on my portfolio. <laughs> but great job on this case, and this is Thanks, you know, the exact kind of financial planning that that needs to be done. But if you're thinking to yourself like this is exactly what I need, I need to know what I own, what it's costing me to own it, uh, where I can reduce the cost of my portfolio, generate more income for retirement. Here's a shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now, you have over two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, our star financial advisor, Emily Devalent. We'll run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. Just bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal so we can get a bird's eye view of everything. And we're going to look at all those critical components on our famous investment analysis spreadsheet like this. We're going to look at fees. This couple is paying over 2.5% a year in fees. A lot of those fees were hidden. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket. And we're going to show you how to increase income. You know, what's your income gap going to look like when you stop working? How are you going to replenish income in retirement? We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by double, by over $10,000 a year. That's a lot of money. And we're going to look at diversification. How much risk are you really taking in your portfolio? Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market went down? This couple had way more money in stocks than they knew until we did this analysis. Now, how much risk are you taking? How can we start to diversify the risk? And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine the most critical question for you. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for literally 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. We have a few spots left. Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692, 844-752-6692. Another great show. And M, second time. I tell you what, we got to have you back more often. I mean, you are just, uh, you're on the ball over there. Thanks, Ryan. Big Bob, enjoying uh, hanging with you in Florida this week. It uh, doesn't get better than that. Hey, nothing could be better, Ryan, than sun in your face in a booming bull market. I'll tell you what, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> Dream come true. <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.